Hi everybody, my name's Mark Hilliard. I'm a master here on the Arcanum and this is the Mystical Light Cohort. Today we're going to do um, Kevin Miller's Level 4 Critique and uh, this is an exciting time. We have a lot of these Level 4 Critiques that have, we, we've been doing here recently and we have a few more to do. Um, so Kevin, I'm going to turn it over to you if you'll tell us a little bit about yourself and about your style of photography and then we'll move forward. Very good. Um, I'm older than a lot of you, uh, 59 now, and I started in photography, got the bug when I was in junior high, and my parents let me have a dark room, so that was fun to do a lot of black and white work when I was young. And then I uh, let it go for a long time. I was in school for a long time. Uh, I'm a physician, so I just didn't pick it up till. Oh, maybe 10 or 12 years ago, I got a small point-and-shoot digital camera and my first taste of digital photography. And then it just kind of mushroomed after that. I got very interested in that and started getting more equipment and shooting more and been pretty active the last seven or eight years, I'd say. And I, um, I like, um, there's different styles I like, but I, I, I guess I feel in, uh, I've come to the grips in the last few years that my, one of my jobs in life is to give hope to people. And not only in my work, but just in my life in general. And sometimes I feel I can do that with photographs uh, of meaningful things for people. Uh, I have a blog, I, a photo blog that I contribute to regularly, and I kind of distill that down to three themes. One of them is uh, gratitude. And one of them is uh, joy in the journey, kind of enjoying life as you go. Uh, one of them is all things to note there is a God, so just showing God's hand in our lives. And so I regularly publish to those themes and uh, kind of have this idea in my mind of, of giving hope. So that ends up, uh, at least at this stage, I end up doing a lot of landscape work. I love vivid colors. I do some HDR work. Um, I do like black and white. I love long exposure. I haven't done uh, as much of that as I might. But I guess I'm trying to find images that are bright and, and generally happy. Even when I shoot people, I'm probably more likely to find happy moments than uh, trying moments, trying to share those with people. And I got to a point uh, more recently where I feel like you know there's a certain amount of um, competence in, in my photography, but I really feel like there's some vision there that I don't understand. I, I need to kind of find out what's inside me, what I really, what vision I really need to, to find and portray with my photography. I, I don't do it professionally, so I, I do it uh, when I can, which I try to find time to do it regularly. But um, it's, a, it's an add-on for me, but it's one that allows me to get away from my left side of my brain and try to show some creativity. And I, I think that was opened up, the cre creative side, I think was opened up mostly by um, well, one of the sentinel events was just some video training from Trey Ratcliffe, which kind of opened my eyes to ways I could do things differently in my post-processing, which was interesting. And then um, I think some of the words to David Dushman, where he talks about uh, the importance of just shooting with vision. So my goal is hopefully to find uh, even a little deeper what I should be photographing, what my vision is, what I can share with the world. All right. That's a very powerful motivation uh, for your imagery, uh, being able to share with others like that. Uh, uh, and no, you're not the oldest one here. I guarantee. You. <laughs> uh, I've got I've got you all beat. I'm afraid. Um, I retired from Kodak over 20 years ago. Yeah. So it's 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 been a long journey, but you're you're getting there. You're close. <laughs> Okay. Do you still shoot any film? No, no film. I love the I love the post processing side. So I think it's just easier to capture in digital. And um, I'm not enough enamored by film to go back to it right now. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see if we can change your mind on that in the future. Okay. All right. So let's go right into your images. Let me share my screen. Here we go. We get the uh, the crazy mirrors. Everybody got my screen? Yes. Fantastic. So what I'm going to do 
is I am going to uh, bring up Bridge. I'm going to make it full screen, and we're going to jump right into your first image. And if you would, please tell us a little bit about this image. But I'm more interested in what your thoughts were before you took the image as you were standing here looking at the scene. Okay. okay. Uh, and I would say this shot's kind of typical in the sense I, I don't always get uh, control of my time when I shoot. You know, I like to shoot at the ends of the day, but I don't always get that option. And this is a trip I took to California for a couple days, and I was driving up the coast. I stopped at Oakland. This is a LDS Oakland Temple. And so I was going to shoot pictures of the temple no matter what because I just hadn't been there to shoot before. And I love the, uh, the dynamic sky, and I, I took some different angles, but I loved having the water there too. I thought it would be a, a fun experiment for me to try to make the water magical and silky. And in this case, I didn't really even leave a lot of texture in it. I just made a pretty, uh, pretty long exposure. And then I had a lot of uh, highlights and shadows, so I did this as an HDR sequence, processed it in HDR uh, program, and then converted it to black and white. So I guess my, my goal was just to try to capture all this, uh, this beautiful dynamic range in a meaningful way. Okay. Um, how wide was the lens on this shot? I think it was uh, probably my 20, probably 24 millimeters. Okay. And I'm going to just double check that I've got it up here too, um, just to make sure here. Pull that up. And I can answer questions about those as we go. The sequence of uh, shutter speed varied from about 1 to 15 seconds in that sequence uh, I took for that. Okay. And um, okay, so that was taken at uh, 17 millimeters. Actually, I took that with my uh, 17 to 40. Okay. All right. Good enough. That answers my question. Okay. Well, I, I love the image. Um, it, it's, it's this uh, it is a very, very busy image, and it shows a lot in it. I have no idea how you managed to capture it without people. In fact, I don't even see any cars in it. I cloned out a couple cars. Aha. Okay. Um, I, I love the fact that you did it as a long exposure. We've got the, the wonderful smooth surface on the water. I find that very, very pleasing. Um, it, it gives us a sense of sensuality uh, in the image and, and draws us in. Um, along with that, we've got some tearing of the clouds up here in the right-hand corner. Mm -hmm. uh, this is cloud movement during that 15-second exposure. Okay. Uh, but yet we don't have any indication of that anywhere else. So the rest of the clouds, they were kind of uh, static and not moving, but something was moving across from this upper right-hand corner. And that just gives us more impact of the image. Uh, that's one of the pluses that we look for when we do long exposures. The, the, the trees are crisp and clear. You've got good contrasts of the image. I love the fact that we've got this circle that leads us in from both the lower right hand and the lower left hand corner of the image. It allows our eyes to walk around the fountain while we're looking at the fountain, and then up the steps to the temple. Um, now, were the trees angled in the original scene as you stood looking at them, or is this, is this uh, uh, a cause from the lens? Lens, I think, from the lens. Okay. Well, given that the church steeples and the towers are so straight, had you gone in with Photoshop and straightened the trees, we probably would have distorted the, the, the church building itself. Um, they are, over here on the edge, they are leaning in with the trees just a little bit. Uh, but the towers look nice and straight. Is that just because they're a small part of the image? Do you think it's not so noticeable? 
No, I, that's because they are they're on, central. They're central they're, image. Yeah, they're on the edge of the image, and the closer right. we are to the edge, the more distortion we get from the lens. Right. Believe it or not, a lot of people use this as an artistic element. Um, mm -hmm. when they will go in and they will shoot this scene with a fish eye. And then the, the trees will take a curve where they're leaning into the image as a C. And that's a very powerful artistic tool as well. Okay. Um, I, I think that your post-processing on this was dead on. Um, great contrast in the sky. Nothing is blown out. You did an excellent job on this. One suggestion that I can have for you on this is on the lower right and left hand edges of the image at the, at the, on the end of this hedge yes um, there is just no detail here so mm -hmm. what the question that pops into my mind is did you vignette the, the corners on purpose as an artistic statement or is this just the way the HDR turned out I think I did vignette it yes okay I would suggest that in the in just in the case of this picture that you don't vignette these these corners. The bottom two are all of them. Just, well, the the tops are not bad. The, these bottom two because they are so dark. Okay. They draw our eye directly to them, and they actually detract from the overall impact of the image. Okay. Even if you had a little bit of detail there, it wouldn't be uh, quite so bad of a distraction. And do you think that would allow you? To follow into the image better if there's a little more detail there? Yes, I do. Yeah, I think so okay. too. That makes sense now that you mention it. Um, and given that it is a long exposure, let's look at the upper left hand corner. There's really no noticeable vignetting up here. In the upper right hand corner, there is, but this could be an artifact of those clouds moving in. Right, right. And that's what I'm thinking is happening here. Uh, that maybe you vignetted and then cropped the image and cut the vignette off the top. Is that possible? Uh, it is, because I was doing this, I think, in Aperture. I didn't have that post, uh, yeah, post cropping vignette option. I think that might be true. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, that that is really about the only area uh, that needs a little bit of work. Let's take away that those dark spots in the lower corners that are so distracting. You might want to to play um, with these perspectives just a little on the tree. Okay. See what happens if you straighten them up. Okay. It probably would be more pleasing with the tree standing up straight, and over on this left hand edge here. When we straighten this tree, we're going to lose this edge of the picture here. So mm -hmm. this dark silhouette of this tree will go away, as will this one over here on the right-hand corner. But you need to be careful that if you do this, that you don't distort the church building itself in the center. I would, I would I lose too many of my leading lines on the lower part, those curves going in? Maybe That's hard to that. say unless we actually go in and try it. Okay. Okay? This is a great image. And this is one that I would be proud to have in my portfolio. And there's really not much that you need to do to take a great image and turn it into a world-class shot. Okay, your vision was clear. Think, um, I'm going to try that. I'll try that straightening the trees. I, I guess part of me could kind of envision these kind of bending into the temple, um, you know, kind of giving homage, if you will. Yes. In a sense, uh, kind of pointing us to the temple. I kind of like that idea. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'll try that the other way too, see if I don't lose too much of that uh, leading lines down below. Yeah. Okay. Now, your idea of the trees paying homage to the temple is a good one too. But for that, um, I would consider using a fisheye for this image instead of yeah. a 17. Okay. Um, do you have a fisheye in your arsenal? I borrowed one before. I don't, I don't own one right now. You would be surprised just how much those trees will bend with a, a 16 millimeter fisheye on your camera. Okay. And they will they will look just like they were bowing before the temple. Okay. And that is a great artistic insight on your part. Do you think the outsides down below, especially, are, um, 
not just the very corners, but the outside edges are too dark in general where the trees are? Or do you think that just leads you in the center more? No, I think that leads us into the center more. I don't think we need to do anything at the base of those trees. Okay. And like I said, if we straighten those trees, the silhouetted trees that are between the trees and the outside edges, uh, those will go away. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay, thank you. That's okay. Great. Great image. I love it. Thank you. Okay, and uh, on a scale of zero to three, we're going to give you a two for this image. Okay. All right. This was very well done, very well executed. Your artistic vision was dead on, and you made your vision happy. Or happy happen. <laughs> you can tell I'm. I'm happy today. I, I need a happy vision. That's good. <laughs> yeah. No. You 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 had a happy vision that worked. And that's one of the things that we need to do if we want to increase our capability of visualizing an image and then making it happen. This very type of practice. Okay. Okay? Thank you. All righty then. Tell us about this one. Uh, this was a trip we took a couple years ago to Oregon coast. I'd never been there. We went with some friends, stayed at a little house there on the beach for a few days. It was June. First day was extremely cold and windy. I thought it was going to be a pretty tough week. Uh, the rest of the week opened up, and we just explored one morning. We, uh, my friend and I went out, and we had seen this little place, a little uh, carve out on the road, and just thought it'd be a fun place to get an image here with the dynamic clouds in the morning, and uh, gave it a yeah, you know, really gave it a kind of a turquoise color to it, kind of a mysterious color in a way, but uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful little spot. I, I captured this also in uh, a sequence, HDR sequence, and blended that together. Well, your HDR processing is very realistic, um, and that when I work in HDR, that is what I strive to do. Rather than turn out a grungy image, mm -hmm. I always try and make it photorealistic, and you, you did a very good job on this. Um, and I don't know how you tell, I mean, I don't mind being, uh, I don't mind my reality being a little bit extreme in the sense, uh, if I think that brings kind of colorful, happy images, I don't mind that, but I'm with you, I don't want to take it too far. Yeah. yeah. Um, this would have been a great image for a long exposure. Mm -hmm. All right. Smoothing out the, the, the surf coming in against those rocks and getting some pairing in the clouds as well. Yes. But that would have reduced the impact or the mood of the image. That's one of the side effects of the, um, the long exposures, reducing the moodiness. Mm -hmm. um, this one you might have considered trying it both and worked for you at the time. So when you say it decreases moodiness, would you say it's a different mood, or what do you, what do you mean by that? It, it lightens the mood. Yeah. For instance, you've got these great clouds. I mean, these are full of, 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 of the mood of storminess. Right. All right? Had we done a long exposure, we would have smoothed out and blended the clouds. And they still would have had a slightly stormy feel to them, but it would have been reduced about 80%. So you would have lost that in the sky. Now, down here in the surf, the surf is nothing. I mean, there's not a lot of surf. There's some waves, and and that they're not crashing or rolling all over everything. So I don't think that we would have damage the mood of the image with a long exposure down here. In fact, that this might have actually made it better. But I'm not sure that losing the the storm the storminess of these clouds would have been in your best interest. But it's something to consider. Okay. When you're standing there with the camera in your hand and you're looking at the scene and you're saying to yourself, how can I best portray this to give me different moods? and try it a couple of different ways as you're standing there. Uh, one of the things you should always carry in your kit with you is a set of ND filters for every lens you own. Um, sometimes it just doesn't work though, and I'm not sure 
how I feel about this image, if this would have been a good candidate for it or not. But there's enough yeah. of a doubt in my mind that it would have been worth experimenting with at the time you were standing there. Let's get that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and this is one of those things that the pre-visualization -visual allows us to explore that. You, you need to walk up to these scenes with an open eye. Don't immediately rush to get the camera out. Take the scene in. Let it wash over you emotionally. And then okay. make decisions about what it is you think you want to capture. And then the camera and the lens and the filters and the tripod, those are just tools. Okay? Yeah, good advice. Yeah. You're going to use those tools to create your image. Um, if, if all I had was a lens with... Uh, a bunch of ND filters, um, you know, th this scene would have looked like, um, well, I would have approached it with a hammer in my hand, and I, <laughs> I would have done nothing but look at it in terms of ND right. uh, for long exposures. But the really successful landscape mm. photographers those that are able to really capture the essence of a scene will always experiment. You will experiment with taking the image in the landscape versus the, the, the portrait mode. You'll try long exposure versus short exposure. Um, you'll try things like motion blurs and rotational blurs, all kinds of artsy-fartsy things that you can do out there. Um, and as you practice these techniques, you'll start to look at each image down the checklist of techniques that are in your current arsenal every time you get your camera out. Okay. Now, this image has a very deceiving horizon. Um, at first, my eyes were drawn to this blue line right across here as a horizon. But the longer I look at this, the more I realize that this is not the horizon, uh, that there are some cliffs that we're going on around the water with. And that makes it difficult to ensure that the picture is level. Okay. So as I look at that dark blue line on the surface of the water, I think, oh, God, this image is leaning a little bit uh, to the left. But actual, actually, it's probably not. Okay, so when you find yourself in a situation like this, it's best to judge the image by the vertical lines of the house. Okay. And when you read in your images from your camera and you do your raw conversion, do you use Adobe's ACR? Uh, I've been using it in a Lightroom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This, well, one, this one was processed in Aperture, actually. Okay. Well. Lightroom's ACR gives you the capability of straightening these lines by on the vertical lines. Right. Uh, they have uh, vertical set lines you can put on the corners of the house, mm -hmm. and it will straighten the image by making the vertical lines of the house straight up and down. Okay. okay. Right, right. Like I said, this is a tough image. This might be perfectly straight. Um, but this I can line, see that there maybe needs a little bit of maybe a little bit of clockwise rotation. Maybe a slight amount, but it's just it's picky. You know, it's not worth enough of our time to even consider it at this point because it's so close. Okay. Um, the processing of the, the waves is perfect. You don't have anything blown out. The clouds are done very well on my computer screen. These clouds are blown out, but in all actuality, on your image, if I load them into Photoshop, they're dead on. Okay. Um, one thing that I would uh, advise you on is maybe taking this tree line here and lightening this just a little bit. Okay. The reason is, if we can provide our viewer a stepped sequence of dark and light areas to draw our eyes in. Okay. And we've got we've got dark, we've got the light surf, then we have this dark area of the cliff, then we have this light earth here, okay? Um, 
I, I think that we would benefit by just slightly lightening this. Just the very the top, the top edge or the middle yeah, just there? Yeah, the top edge. Just this top area right yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. I'm um, adding a little bit of structure. Do you use the Nick tools? I have, yes. Uh -huh. Okay, Viviza is your friend. Okay. Okay. Just look at the cliff face. We have this dark area, we have the light area, we have a dark area. I would put a control point here. I would add a little bit of brightness to this area here. Just increase the exposure slightly. But I would add overall structure to this whole cliff face. I'd make it a little bit more grungy. Okay. All right. Um, you might want to even lighten up this area where the, the grass is not really growing very well. Mm -hmm. to accentuate that, that stair step sequence of light, dark, light, dark to draw the, the, views, the, the, the viewer's eyes into the image. Okay. This is a wonderful image. And this would look good on anybody's wall in any gallery anywhere in the world. You. Like I said, the only thing that's a little discerning about it is this line. Mm -hmm. And I know that this isn't the horizon, but my mind looks at that and it immediately says the image is tilted, even though it may very well not be. But maybe that's more important as what your mind sees. Maybe yes. that's more important anyway. Yes. So yeah. even if you if you straighten this line right here, even though it's not the horizon, mm -hmm. it would be enough of an illusion so that I didn't tilt my head when I looked at the image. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Great work on this. This was a really good image to submit. Again, one that I would be proud to own myself. Thank you. Um, I'm going to give you a three on this because this is just so close to being perfect that all of the, the little suggestions I have given you are just little picks. Okay, little tiny things that really don't matter in the overall scheme of the image. Okay. Okay? Thank Good you. job. Thank you. All right. Tell us about this one, please. Uh, this was interesting. I bought some tulips for my wife, and I'd never looked inside a tulip, and I was surprised it had all this beautiful structure and color in it. And uh, so in the house, I uh, stuck my, this was actually taken with my Olympus camera. I think I put my 8 millimeter, 7.5 millimeter lens on and got it right up to the flower opening and just experimented with lights down below the trans, you know, tra lights of the trans, uh, transparent through the flower and until I could get something that showed the detail well. And uh, I just loved the texture of it. I, I said, never really looked inside a tulip. Tulips. So I was just uh, at awe about the beautiful color and sun. Yeah, uh, God's wonders in the most smallest of areas that we yeah. wouldn't normally look at. Right. Um, I love everything about this. I like that you chose a square format. Um. The lighting on the center is just perfect, and it leads our eyes directly in, and then we spiral out, coming out to the edges of the image. How perfect is that? Um, this image might actually do well being a little bit tighter cropped. Okay. Um, maybe come in like this. All right. But maybe not. This is an artistic interpretation. And you are the artist. So it has to be your vision. It has some layers right now in a sense. You know, it's got the darker outer and that little brighter red. And then you go into those other layers. So I guess, is that important? I don't know. I guess you could well, lose. I, I like the layers. And we're going to talk about those right now. All right. Let's see, we're going to shrink this guy down. I'm going to bring up Photoshop. All right, here is your image, okay? Okay. Now let's make it fit the screen. 
And as you can see, it displays a lot better in Photoshop than it does in uh, Bridge, doesn't it? I don't know. For mine, I can tell too much difference, but it looks, it looks like it does on my computer. That's pretty okay. good. Notice the histogram. Yep. Okay. Um, it's I not a bad histogram. But what I wanted to show you is I wanted to talk to you about the textures of these red petals. Okay. Now, most macro flower photographers go for smoothness and a fine grade graduation across the, the petals themselves. But, as you said, this particular image has lots of layers of things happening. Okay? And as the petals curl out towards our eyes, they go out of focus, which is very, very pleasing. So what I suggest is that we take this one step further and we load Vivisa and we're going to do a quick and dirty edit in Vivisa. I am not even going to use a control point, okay? I'm going to go down to, to the structure and I'm going to increase overall structure and look at what that does to the textures in the petals curving out towards our eyes, okay? Okay. Now, it adds a little bit of structure also in the, 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 the purple-violet areas in the center. But what I like about this is the fact that it gives it more mood, more interest. And now when our eyes are drawn into the center here, and we start to, to spiral out, we're caught in these enhanced textures. Yeah. And as, as that pedal curves towards us. So let's, let's apply this. And as you see, this is a very subtle change. Here it is before. Mm -hmm. Here it is after. And it's so very subtle, but it makes such a large difference on the overall impact of that image. Okay. And why would you why would you want to do it overall there as opposed to a control point just putting it in the center? In because the I was looking to bring out the textures and the red petals. Yeah. And any little extra that I got in the center was fine. I guess. As long as I didn't go too grungy in the center. And when I was applying the level of the structure, I was watching both this corner here and the center. And when I started to get noise and grain in this purple area, I backed it off. And that was where I stopped. Okay. All right. Sometimes you don't need control points. Now, you could if you wanted, after we had done the overall image, you could have put a control point on this area covered with pollen here and tried to increase the structure there to make that pollen sharper. Okay. But it's really not necessary. All right. This is a fabulous image. Um, this was a great experiment. Yeah. And could, if I asked you a question, let's see if you could answer it. Okay. What did you learn about this exercise when you did this image? Um. I learned there was a lot more, more texture there than I thought, and I played with different lighting. So I and I'd shot some flowers by transluminating them before, and I just love how that brings out the texture. So I think in you know you were saying maybe usual for flowers is to put uh, gradations of smooth across the petals, but I think when you transluminate them, you really are going for the structure, which I think in the right flower can work. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I was kind of surprised to see these uh, these circular uh, levels of different uh, brightness and darkness. I didn't. That was kind of a happy surprise to me. I was you know, really trying to process for the color in the middle, and and reds are always hard on digital sensors to oh, they blow, are. blow those out. But um, I want it to be pretty bright and yet not blown out, of course. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the one lesson that you should have walked away from with this is don't be afraid to try something unexpected. 
outside your comfort zone, out of the box. You all heard these these saying. Right. Stick your best lens inside that flower. That was a, a leap of faith. And it took me a while. I took a lot of shots on the kitchen table to get what I liked on the lighting. So that was good for me because I try to get out of my left brain as much as I can. Now, what what type of light did you use to to, sh to shine through the back of the flower? I think I just had a flashlight, maybe two. I can't remember one or two flashlights I put underneath it. All right. Um, Amazon sells filter gels in sample packs for about two dollars for about five hundred different gels. Mm -hmm. um, you would be given this type of work. You would be well advised to buy a couple of those. They're, okay. just, they're just gel filters. And they're like two dollars for a sample pack that you can tape over your flashlight to further change the impact and and the uh, the mood of the image by changing the color of the light that you use to shine through the flower. Oh, that's a great idea. So that, that must be what you used on your mushroom shot. Absolutely. Yeah. I use okay. I use gels. Okay. I, like that. I used a bright white light shining through the top cap of the mushroom from above. Mm -hmm. And then I used a secondary soft diffuse light shining up from underneath with a warm gel over it. And how did you diffuse it? Was that a special flashlight you had? Or? Yes, it was. Um, there is another master on the Ar Arcanum. His name is Les Saucier, and he is a good friend of mine. And he designed and sells macro flashlights hmm. that open up and allow you to put cut out gels inside of them, and you can twist the light head to diffuse the beam. Okay. I will show you one of his at a later date. Okay. In fact, that workshop that we've got going on here starting this Wednesday, Les is coming down as a guest instructor Great. Uh, to my workshop, and, and we're going to be doing macro work with carnivorous plants in the, front, in the Francis Marion Forest. And I will make sure that I get information so that I can share with you guys on his products because they're, right. they're inexpensive and they're, they're wonderful creative tools. But they're nothing that you can't do on your own either. Okay. Okay. This is this is a this is a as good as it gets. This is a solid three image. Thank you. Okay. Um, outstanding work. Can you imagine what this image would look like printed on metallic paper or a sheet of metal? Yeah. Yeah. This would literally leap off and grab the viewer by the throat and say, "Look at me." Especially with a little more structure like you put in there. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. But the structure, again, that's just an artistic enhancement. All right? And you, others might well choose to, to reduce the structure. It just it depends on what you want to create. I like having the structure, at least, and particularly centrally, you know, I think it draws you in. To have mm -hmm. But wow. I think that this is one of the more impressive images that I've seen in a long time. Thank you. Okay. So let's jump right back into this again. All righty then. Tell us about this image. Uh, we had the uh, privilege to go over to Germany uh, about a year ago, first time to Europe really and uh, my son was going to spend a few months over there living with a family that um, I had taken care of the, the, the father as a patient and they moved over there. And so this is Starnberg Lake outside of Munich and uh, we just took a tour out there with the family and the sunset was, was beautiful and I this also was with my Olympus camera. I had a little tripod and did a five sequence, I think it was, HDR bracketing on this. Um, and I just love the colors mostly. I, 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 I ran up the, the HDR effect stronger here, like you can see on the, on the little building there. I think it may be fit to have that a little bolder and grungier. 
and then I uh, did some post processing to try to actually smooth out some of the water and just make it a little more dreamy. Um, you can actually see some detail in the water over by the building in the shadows of it, but I uh, and maybe in some other areas. But I tried to uh, make it kind of dreamy and smooth, and I like the counterbalance of the little ship off to the left. I I've got a pretty midline horizon here, which I kind of thought worked for this because I, I didn't want to miss the reflections uh, from the sky in the water. I wanted to try to make those pretty symmetric. Okay. Um, well, that was going to be the first thing I talked about, the horizon right down the middle. Normally, that's something that we frown upon. But... That being said, what you've done here is you've created a, a, a cross-like structure um, with the horizon going across the center, and then we have the sun up here and the sun down here. So that gives us another vertical line here. And this really works. I would not change a thing on this image. Um, I bet that the other um, people that when you were showing these images said, oh, they'll probably say something about that line down the middle. It came up. It came up. <laughs> um, but no, this really works. And you're right. The sailboat gives us an anchor point for the image that just is, is stunningly beautiful. Um, I do like how you smooth the water out here, but yet you have detail here. The uh, curiously, that same tool that we were using in Viviza, and you probably already are aware of this, but do you know that structure slider? Mm -hmm. If you put a control point over here and go negative structure, smooth it. Yeah, it will smooth it greatly. It's almost like adding a three-stop ND filter to it. Good point. Yeah. And then by going here, going to the positive on the structure, um, I like doing that in reflections within the water itself, the reflective area, going up on structure to bring out detail here. All right? Good idea. Increasing the detail on the building, which you've done. Um, you're right, it has that grungy appearance, but it needs it. Okay, um, I'm looking at your sky. I'm not seeing any dust spots on your sensor. And as we start moving further and further ahead in our leveling here, that will be something that we will automatically deduct points for. If you don't sweep your skies in your water areas and remove your dust spots. What kind of camera are you shooting with again? This is an Olympus... Uh EM10, so they're... Okay, so that, that's the Micro Four Thirds mirrorless. Mm -hmm. So I took that, I bought that about a year or so ago for travel, and I, I like it in a lot of ways. I, I miss having the bigger sensor for some images, but it's it's pretty pretty cool camera, and I, I've been able to make 20 by 30 canvases that look nice off it, and it'll, it'll process fairly large, which is nice. Well, it's a good camera. I had one converted it to infrared before I sold it off. Mm -hmm. um, it, it has some very powerful features in it for long exposures. It, it, yeah, have sorry. you discovered them, that, that, that Polaroid mode where as you're doing your long exposure it will actually develop on the LCD screen? Yeah, while you're doing it? yeah there's some very interesting things it does that way and that you don't get in DSLRs. My other camera is a 5D Mark III which I love that sensor, but it doesn't have some of the features. Yeah. Um, something else to consider is watch the Fuji line of X cameras in the future, too. Mm -hmm. um, they give you most of the functionality that you see in the Olympus, but with a bigger sensor. Yeah, I've been kind of keeping an eye some on those, and Sony has some amazing products, too. I yes, they do. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's jump back to this. The sky looks great. Um, I just, I love everything about this image. It's striking. One thing I've kind of like is you know, looking after the fact is kind of feel like the clouds 
and the reflection of the, of the clouds, they kind of point to that building. It's almost like a little arrow, if you will. Yes, they do. Um, I, I just kind of love the, that part of the composition. So that would be another reason you, know, you don't, wouldn't want to lose all that in, the, in a crop that would lose, your, you should lose part of your water. Yep. No, th this this image is just truly perfect, and you don't get many like that right out of the right out of the starting gate. Of course, I'm not sure how long you work on it. But I worked this, on it a while. I, that took some work to get uh, done. This is gorgeous, and you get a three for this image. Thank you. Lovely. All righty then. Next image. Will you tell us about this, please? So this was one of my ten, which um, maybe I was a little surprised, but the group thought was a pretty uh, striking image, so I included it. Uh, I'd gone up to visit my son in Boulder, Colorado, and drove up the mountains to Netherland. And it was like, uh, oh, I think it might have been a June. Um, I think I'll just look here, I can tell you. I think it was in the summer. No, that's not true. It was February. <laughs> anyway. So we drove up, and um, I love the shadows in the in the snow. And I just tr I tried to find a spot in the forest where I'd have kind of a leading line into the image. And so here, from lower left to upper right, there's almost a little pathway through there. Uh, there were a few of these uh, brighter orange trees, which I loved. I, if I could have handpicked those, I would have put them in a little different spot. But they, I think they add some intrigue to the image. And so it's a, it's a busy image, but to me it's about just patterns. And it, I've got horizontal patterns in the snow, and I've got vertical patterns in the trees, and then a diagonal line across the image. Um, so I just, I mostly just thought it was intriguing, kind of geometric with a little bit of color to add to that. Oh, yeah. And I... I love this little bowl here around the base of this tree. Yeah. That is a remarkable anchor point. I hadn't paid much attention to that, so that's interesting. Okay, this I haven't really seen that. The first thing my eye jumps to is right here, and it's like, oh my goodness, what mm -hmm. is this? And I keep going back to it again and again and again. Um, you, the exposure on the snow is perfect, and most people fail in that. All right. Um, like you, I like the, the orange trees. Um, I like the vertical lines and the, the horizontal lines. But that having been set, I find this large open area here kind of distracting. You've got yeah, where, where you have fewer shadows. You mean? Well, no, just this this whole lower right hand. Oh, corner. okay. Okay. Um, and I was thinking that if we change the crop on that just a bit. That's a thought, yeah. All right. And let's add a little bit more to the bottom, a little bit more, and go this way so that we get this okay. tree. And I want, I want actually a little bit more. All right. So we get this tree in the base. We've got one long horizontal line here that's very strong. We've got this little hill, we've got this tree, we'll just cut out this area here. I think that this makes for a much more powerful composition. This large area of nothing here does not add anything to the image whatsoever. Interesting. I like that you left that. There's a little tree in the upper right that's colored as well. I like mm -hmm. that you yeah, right there. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so go go back to your full crop, uncrop one now again. Let's just see the difference here, Mark. Yeah, it does, it's kind of heavy without contributing. You're right. Yeah, it doesn't contribute that. anything to the image whatsoever. Yeah, good thought. All right, but oh my goodness, this scene right here is worthy of its own composition in photograph. You know, maybe something along the lines of this. Vertical over there. A vertical here. Mm -hmm. Let's go in on it. Look at that. Yeah, that, that is pretty. Okay. Um, the best advice I can give you on this type of image 
is to do as you did. Start at a wide angle and take the whole scene in front of you. And then just start working in closer and closer and closer. Okay. All right? And take different vantages, different viewpoints. Um, even in this image, we have enough here that we could do a vertical here of this. Yeah. And like I said, this is this is just stunning here. Um, another thing that you could do, instead of doing a four by three, uh, let's go to uh, let's go to twenty by let's six, and let's flip him. Hmm. And let's look at this kind of in a panorama format. Now that's not nearly enough. Okay, yeah, so let's go to ten. Mm -hmm. And do something like this. Yeah, that's got some intrigue, maybe even a little shorter, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Experiment with them in that panorama mode as well. Mm -hmm. Because we get rid of that, that unnecessary space down here, but yet we still keep all of these little snow mounds around the base of the trees, which are really the, the main subject here. I mean, we like to think it's the vertical and the horizontal lines, but in my eye, um, it's these little snow mounds with the trees coming out of them. Yeah, very interesting. Okay? Just something to think about, all right? Yep. Um, I'm going to give you a two on this image, okay. um, and you've got way more than enough not only to do your level four critique, but you know to have done the the next critique up too. So, okay, uh, this is these were stunning, stunning images, and I really enjoyed looking at each and every one of them. Thank you. Um, I liked everything about all of them. You did a really good job. Thanks to the crew for helping me pick those out of my pile. So. Let's turn this off and get me back in here. Um, well, well done. Well done. You. And uh, you are achieving your goal of impacting the world with the beauty that you capture. Thank you. Okay. It does that. So, you all, you can unmute your microphones. Um, congratulations, Kevin. You. you have uh, leveled up, okay. and now we start to move forward uh, even more. And uh, it gets harder from here on out. If you've been looking at the level sixes that I've been having, uh, we've got uh, Chris and Pam doing their level sixes, and I've made him repeat a, a couple of things uh, for the level six posts, haven't I, Pam? She just came back on. She's gone, and now she's back. I think. Yeah. I don't know if she heard that comment. So. But I have been pay paying attention to that. It sounds like um, it'll be fun to dig into those. So. Yeah. So no, it gets harder, and and I become much much more critical, um, as as Pam and Chris will attest at level six. Okay. Okay, and uh, we, we learn a lot from the critiques. Um, we're going to start adding more videos uh, that will help you guys expand your uh, arsenal of tools as well here in the very, very near future. So you guys, feel free to comment. Well, congratulations, Kevin. I thought you did a great job. I thought all the pictures were real nice. Uh, the, the, fl the flower, especially, that was uh, that was amazing. I saw it a few days ago on the site, but um, it, it it got me thinking and and inspired me to try to do something like that too. Very Thank cool. You. Thank you. Yep, yeah, it was very well done. All right, then um, we are running a little late. Um, I thank you all for coming. I'm going to stop the broadcast, but hang around, please, and uh, we will see you all on the next one.